meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here we go. I think it's happening now, Uma. <laughs> Oh, hello, Uma Dinsmore Tuli. <laughs> so, first of all, um, I just want to say that I'm Alexandra Pope and I'm co director of Red School and co author of Wild Power with my wonderful co director, Shani Hugo Wurlitzer. And I am with the most <laughs> troublesome, <laughs> uh, wild, and divine woman. Uma Dinsmore Tuli. And Uma, you are a force of nature. You are, of course, the author of the magnificent book, Yoni Shakti. Actually, you're the author of many books, but that is your most recent, well, it isn't quite your most recent, but your sort of big magnum opus. That's the thing. Yes. And um, I met you um, on one of my earliest workshops coming back when I came back to the UK to live yeah. and something clicked in your brain around this work <laughs> and clicked between us and you were on our very first training that we ran. And actually you, are, I, I actually think of you as a sort of, uh, as the secret marketing department <laughs> Red School, because you are so divine in the way you talk up all our work through your most magnificent work of womb yoga. And I remember when Shani and I first experienced it with, um, you taught a session in London and we were there. And I, I remember looking up at Shani after the session and going, we have to work with this woman. We were like, oh, we were wow when we came out of that. And um, so I want to salute your divine work. And today, we are here to talk about, and you've just momentarily frozen, so I'm going to hope that you come back in a moment, Uma. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about menopause together. And um, Uma, can you hear me? I think I have lost you. How about this? Oh, she's back. Are you back? Yes, I'm back. <laughs> I had a little momentary weird yeah, just completely weird. So and it's happening again. I think that it's saying that we're live on Facebook, so fingers crossed. <laughs> a few. Oh, so I was just saying that we're going to give it another go. We are um, going to be talking about menopause together because, um, well, at Red School, we're about to launch an online menopause course, and we've got a free call coming up on the 15th of October. Mm. And um, you, dear Uma, are now firmly in menopause. And um, so we thought it would be <laughs> to have a conversation with you about it. And I actually suggested that you come up with one or two questions that would really serve your community. So I'm going to just hand it over to you, Uma, to um, pick up the baton and... Okay, yeah. So um, pick up the baton. So I, I'm, yeah, I'm here in my full three-year-old self what you see is what you get <laughs> and I'm hopefully sharing uh, some queries and questions that might be of value to the women um, that I uh, my community who are of all ages so um, I would like to like come out <laughs> in that way out of the, the world of everything's the same and nothing's changing I mean you can see stuff's changing and um, I had a question really my top question was this going on for a very long time so many women are asking like when does menopause start like how do you actually define it and why does it seem to be so so hard I mean in my particular experience I've not had a lot of physical mm -hmm. suffering among my menstruations it's always been very light and easy but like the mental and emotional roller coaster of menopause is really quite extraordinary so that's my top my first question is the women are like it's hard yeah, that doesn't he freaking talks about it because it's like let's pretend that's not happening and so that's my question why is it so long why is it so hard um we'll start with that one to begin with is that a good question to start with well, i mean i suppose it doesn't have to be hard i mean i've met women it's a, it's a beauty um mm -hmm. that one all ears yeah <laughs> and, and i'm going to unpack it 
Um, the first thing I want to say is that I, menopause is a normal and healthy transition point in our lives and that we aren't, there isn't a design flaw in the female body, okay? That's the thing to remember. Now, so then we have to ask ourselves, well, if there isn't a design flaw, what the fuck is going on? Um, and I, in, in a way, um, the sort of layers to this, which is that I actually think that what women are experiencing is a sort of a report card on the state of the world, frankly, on the way that we're living, on the levels of stress, the exhaustion, the, um, you know, the environmental toxicity, all, all those sorts of things um, come to play. So at menopause, we go into quite a vulnerable time because that's the nature of transition, Uma. All transitions, any kind of transition, you're more vulnerable. And, and the body uses that moment really to tell us um, deeper things about ourselves. So it's, it's both a re report card on the state of the world, if you like, but it's also a report card on what's happening in your individual being, you know, how you're doing overall. And um, mm. in many cases, really, I think that, you know, women are turning up at the door of menopause exhausted and um, that this exhaustion has set in quite early. So what women are calling perimenopause um, is really, um, for me, I don't like to use the term perimenopause because it, it feels like um, women are putting themselves into menopause too early. And so in your 40s, when you start, to, if you have troubles with your menstrual cycle, women immediately think, oh, I'm going into, you know, it's perimenopause. And they go into a kind of menopause consciousness when what is happening is you have health problems. You have hormonal problems and you need to attend to them. Well, your hormonal health is telling you about your overall health. And you need to attend yeah. to that and not to start thinking I'm heading towards menopause because I feel it diminishes the power and significance of what menopause is about as this psycho-spiritual um, revolution you go through. It's a great initiation. It's a sacred it's a kind of holy moment, really. There's extraordinary forces going on, and that's a very deep story. <laughs> and, um, and really, you need to get prepared for menopause in the sense of, it's like being an athlete, you know, getting in training for something. You really, it, it's the reason why it's looking so arduous and long and hard is because women are tired, in a, you know, in a word. And um, yeah, yeah. That also well, that's one thing, and just one other thing I'll throw in the pot, and then I'll put it back. So, to you. so what I yeah, yeah go ahead. You go ahead, Emma. But what I'm hearing makes some sense about my own personal experience, and what I observe is that in my early forties, when I was actually writing Yoni Shakti, which was a mother of a job. I believed that I was entering menopause. I was like, this is a menopausal book, but it wasn't. It was the book of a very exhausted person whose body was drying up and I was experiencing multiple balance disorders, butter derangements in Ayurvedic terms, like I was like desiccated and dry. But that actually, my, my cycles were still running. And what I see now, 10 years later, in fact, 11 years later, because I wrote that book 11 years ago, is that now I'm truly in what is actually the menopausal experience and what I thought was going on there was actually exhaustion. It was exhaustion. And so in addressing those health issues for myself and learning, I mean, there were some key tools that I utilize a lot, yoga nidra being one of them. I could see that what's happening now, 11 years later, is a really fully potentized meeting kind of with every aspect of myself that is no longer sustainable, welcome, or authentic. That's what I'm being called, you know? And I'm um, called to, to, to call out. What you've just said there is magnificent. And I just kind of want to breathe that in and for women to breathe that in. That you're meeting um, aspects of yourself 
that, well, you're meeting yourself and you're discovering the aspects of yourself that you no longer want or are actually not you. And you're dealing with, actually, you put it so beautifully. I think I'm being very clumsy in how I'm saying it. But essentially, you're going through this revolution in how you're thinking about yourself and really coming to the core of something. And that, 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 that is the sign of menopause. And it's very core. And when you're coming up to menopause in your 40s, you, of course you're going to be examining your life. Of course you're going to be going, oh, shit, what, should, you know, what am I about? And all those existential questions <laughs> come up. Because suddenly you do realize that 50 is on the horizon now when it wasn't before. And 50 feels quite big and like, oh, I'm getting older. And what's my life about? So you're going to have those kind of existential questions in your 40s. But when you get into your 50s and you step into menopause, they, it's of a different order altogether. That's what I'm hearing when I hear you speak. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, and what I, I hear and feel from the women around me of my own age, um, and I see people entering this process at different stages in the same way that we entered uh, Menarche at different ages you know yeah. um so some women entered Menarche at yeah. 10 11 some of us was the, the kind of spectrum but what I feel I can kind of smell it and I, I think to me that's one of the deep medicines has been to smell our women and to look and to see how we're all dealing with it and everybody's dealing with it in a different way but there's a quality of integrity about it whatever the fuck we choose to do with the gray hair or the wrinkles or anything that's visible because actually the integrity of the real change is, is hidden inside yes and um but from a, from a yoga from a yoga therapy perspective that's really powerful because we have five bodies in yoga therapy and only one of them is as you can see and so all the attention gets put on that and like everyone's like oh what are you doing about this that? but actually the the vital energy quality is the second body and that's shifting to I kind of have a preciousness about what i will put my vital energies into because it's no longer abundant you know and i feel i was blessed with a prince energy you know that's just a little thing you know my mother makes me look like a wet lettuce you know she's still full power at 78 but like that's only their second body and the third body is this mental and emotional reevaluation. I in that what people are calling perimenopause because peri just means about or around like perimeter it's that's often just about the physicality of it but i mm -hmm. In like 11 years down the line, I'm deep into what we now I'm looking at the not just the physical and not just the vital energies and not just the emotional stuff, but now it's really it's like intuitive, it's a profound, um, spiritual you know, it's it, it's like the moon card in the in the, the mother beast, it's like you know, it's the dark night of the soul, it's the moon turned upside oh, down. Yes, a woman, <laughs> oh, a woman is doing this deep excavation work of her soul and it is in that act of doing that Emma there is this extraordinary waking up that goes on you know I'm hearing you just really waking up even more to you know what you're about but also the other element for me is that women wake up to um, the world they wake up to one um, the state of the world, they suddenly see through things, you know, they suddenly, it's like suddenly seeing the emperor has no clothes. That is just amazing. The emperor absolutely has no bum. clothes. Um, but also, uh, so there's that kind of material level, but you're seeing through into, you're being awoken to a larger consciousness. Um, at, at, at menopause it's like you're stepping you're learning you're stepping into and learning to live into a much more expanded awareness of um of life and your place in that life Uma. you know mm. oh yeah it's very strong so to me that's that's actually an into a very deep humility I received a very important 
yes, teaching really from, from a financial advisor. I, I believe me, I needed financial advisor, and she suggested that when dealing with Her Majesty's inland revenue with HMRC or the IRS, if you're in the US, I mean, if you're dealing with those people, she's, I said, what do I do? I can't talk to those people. She said, humility and confidence. Good combination of those two, like courage and humility at the same time. And I was like, oh, I know what that is. That's menopause. It's like complete humility. Like I am flawed, you know, I've been bleeding for 12 days. I haven't bled for 64 days. Who friggin' knows what's going on? But I can be humble about that because I can't do anything about it other than be courageous and confident. So I tried that particular, it's a good piece of advice, by the way, if you have to talk about taxes, you know, which is another thing that you can't avoid. To me, it felt like the great self assessment, you know, it's like, it's like doing your taxes. It's like, <laughs> that's what menopause is. And all of this is coming home to roost at time, you know? My parents are getting really old. They need reasonable, really loads of help. I could have a full-time job, you know, looking after my two very elderly parents who are 90 and 78. But I can't do that, you know, I can, but I, you know, it's like these things come home to roost, you know, when you have to assess everything in your, your tax return, it's like a menopausal tax return. It's like your life. It's like, Hey, by the way, you, you know, you 50 year old lady down there, come on, fess up, pay what you owe. Honestly, it's like, there's no escape. <laughs> well, you've said it all, so, you know, you've, you've, got said to it all your house. Right. you've got to like, you've got to borrow from the menopause tax return. <laughs> It, this word humility, um, and it lives with humility. Me. Humility. I mean, there's people day love day and night, Uma. Day and night. When I it is. Um, yeah. it, it is very humbling, but it is that humility, that humbling process, <laughs> is extraordinarily liberating. I feel. I feel totally liberating. I feel very humbled and I also feel, um, but that in that process of being humbled, there is this freedom that emerges. Uh, Uma, are you, are you still there? Sorry, our internet connection isn't fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes the, 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 angel, the, the angels and the demons of technology are kind of yeah, dancing the around a little bit. So. Technology are having a little battle at the moment. I just hope the angels kind of win out here. Um, Yes, humility. No, 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 they love each other. We need the I, demons. <laughs> as well. <laughs> well, thank you, demons. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so humility, yes, is a very key component of this. Um, I, um, you know, I, I, you had another question. Your second question was a very powerful one. And I wonder if it's a good point to bring it in here, Uma. Can you remember that second question you had written down? <laughs> I'm trying to remember the second question. The oh, first I, one was I, all I, about I can remember it. It was really, what is the, what is the superpower? What are the superpowers of, um, of- Oh yeah, that was it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I've, I've done a lot of mulling on this. And, and my initial thought with menopause itself is, that the, 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 one of the key superpowers for me is sight. You have sight, not in, well, it's insight as well, but it's this sight. You see into things. You see through things. You see yourself as if for the first mm -hmm. time. Um, the, it is a quality of revelation. And, you know, I said that thing about the emperor's got no clothes. It's that sight at work. You suddenly see through the fabric of life and you know and and you see through to and sense it's not literal sight it is a a sensing and a knowing maybe it is a literal sight too but it's a sensing and knowing and and being able to sense the dimensions at work and i'm going to go one step further here and talk about a lot of the madness that women experience yeah. or what they're calling madness you know all these crazy feelings oh. a lot of anger yeah. and so on i feel that's the shadow side of not understanding this new sight they have they're tired they're going too fast they don't have enough time and space for themselves 
And that site then turns up as overwhelm and reactivity and anger and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tired because actually the very first time um, I was in a place where I, I was actually really able to listen to a circle of women speaking about menopause made a huge impression on me. And, and I was too young to be doing this. I was like, ladies, it was in Cork City. Our Irish sisters. And only, you know, only half of me is English. The better half of me is Irish. You know, you know that. The better half of me is Irish. Anyway, so I get called to Cork City. On the back of that, we're doing this, like a menopause circle. And I'm only in my 40s. You know, I'm like, ladies, I really shouldn't be doing this, but I'll facilitate. I have those skills. And, you know, there were probably about 18 women in that group in Cork City. And they ranged between the ages of kind of like me in their early 40s, right up to women in their 70s other each woman was given space to share you know what she said she said i sure i thought i'd gone mad i thought i'd gone I, thought I was insane i thought i'd lost my mind one after another every single and, and when we'd heard every woman said it we all looked at each other everyone went well we're not mad what is this that every single woman individually on her own believed herself to be mad and i think part of that is trying to put this process into a system and I haven't you know I, that doesn't work like if we say there are these they, there are, these are the stages of menopause and this is what you can expect but yeah, each person is like each woman is is making peace with it in her own way and the best help I could see and I, I was so grateful and humbled by this experience and also horrified because I was like well what the fuck I mean these are the eight so these are the 18 ladies who can who are who are hearing each other and they're like yeah but my sister and my sister and my cousins and my neighbors and my friends and my colleagues and no one else would talk about it so in separating from each other we we play into this idea that it is insane it's an insanity when in fact it isn't it's a superpower as you've raised but the superpower is only evident when we get together and realize that each woman's perceived insanity was in fact another aspect of herself coming to light it was and especially you know yes. It's still in that context in, in, in Catholic Ireland and in what's okay. And yeah. Mm, and uh, well, love so I felt. Really, yeah. I love, that, that, um, I love that phrase, Uma. I'm just going to repeat it back. Herself coming to light. And that's what's happening at menopause. Yourself is coming to light. And if you yeah. are stressed and yeah. tired and you and have for me, I don't know this. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I jumped. If, yes, there's some time lapse going. If you're stressed and tired and you have no space for yourself to allow yourself to recognize <coughs> that you are coming to light, <laughs> then it turns up as craziness. It turns up as feeling, not craziness, but feeling like you are going mad. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, and my sense is that um, from, from my perspective, I mean, and maybe from others too, what I had learned um, through menstruality consciousness about the pre-menstruum, what has been and continues to be invaluable because I recognized some, even early on, I recognized aspect, <coughs> aspects of the challenges of what was menopausal was really familiar to me because part of the superpower I discovered in my menstruality consciousness was my, was my pre menstruum which I had been like, people thought I was mad because it manifested as rage. It manifested as rage, and I would get into fights in the street with men much bigger than myself, you know, which was life threatening, really. And so, it's, uh, having recognized it was a, 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 an interesting period of my life, but, it, but what I learned with the work I did with Red School and with some of the kind of practices of self awareness from yoga was to actually observe that and see that was only happening for a brief period. I'm like, I mean, these men's 
the whole time because basically that only happens around for me it was around day 27 or something but the process of recognizing that in one's menstrual cycle seems to me a really valuable so the superpower of whatever aspect of the cycle is the deep challenge then maybe shows up i don't know like question if that shows up in men in menopause because for me like i was like oh i know what this is this is the pre menstruum but this is like not going on for one day or two days this is now eight years <laughs> this is eight years of the pre menstruum and i'm like on this crazy edge and, and actually, but it isn't like, crazy I, get, I mean i'm using crazy like crazy wisdom you are i'm gonna soothe things as well, a little bit um the menopause is a bit and menopause, yes, what happens premenstrually is giving you the heads up on something. Now, initially, when you go into menopause, it's like PMS on steroids. You know, it's very intense that um, it's all no, no, reactive, critical of things. Um, but if you're present, then actually it can become a very refining process of clarifying what's not going to be in your life. But and as you stay with that and you are resting, 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 resting is the base note of menopause. Do less, rest more. Um, as you're resting more and, and dealing with everything that, because that premenstrual energy is a very insightful cutting to the core, to the truth of something. And you want to harness that because it's amazing. And as you work with that, you actually do come to a place of greater ease and chilledness and kind of almost cruising. You're, you're, you're very much in menopause, but you're now just sort of held a little bit in a bubble and you, you've, you've kind of got the hang of it and you've dealt with some shit and <laughs> you're doing some just good healing work and doing some good nourishment of yourself. And so there's a period of grace, shall we say, Uma, and in that grace um, come the kind of revelations and the visioning of, you know, the next life, because you've got a new life emerging ahead of you. And essentially what menopause is about is getting your act together. It's like cleaning up from the other, from that previous act, <laughs> that previous life, cleaning some of that up, taking what is good from it and putting to bed what you no longer need or want, having a damn good rest doing some repair rewiring work and now you're feeling yourself being organized you're organized by you're actually being organized by the spiritual worlds you're being organized now about quite what it is you're needing to tend to as you come into your post-menopause life you know that's a whole new story a whole new adventure and you're coming into this lovely alignment with yourself. It is really lovely. And you know, I'm 10 years out the other side, Uma. And it is so good. It is so good. You know, it's just like woman unleashed. You know, it is, it's great. Self-care does not stop. I'm, I'm the queen of self-care because I want to feel fabulous all the time. But it is, it is this wonderful alignment and resting place in who you are it is just so beautiful and so good mm. it's really lovely <laughs> Do you, can i ask a little bonus question yes because i associate grace with uh with humor actually <laughs> you, you associate and i what? wonder if one of grace oh with humor yeah, with yeah, yeah. humor with yeah. humor and um, one yeah, one of the and humility and grace and humor are kind of tied up you know um and i wonder whether uh one of the superpowers of menopause <laughs> is the capacity to just laugh at yourself i mean it's all very high and spiritual and thing but honestly just to really see not only to see that the emperor's ass is out naked but that like, really, you know, I, I found, and I've, I've appreciated the humor of older women now. I've just spent some wonderful time with a great uh, older Laura Doe Harris. I don't know if you're oh, familiar yes. with her from the university. Yeah, who's yeah. a wonderful post-menopausal sister and who I've had the good fortune to spend some time 
with Emma. She brought her vaudeville and the vulva to, to our yoga camp, and and has sh- and and I what I see in 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 her and also in the sharing this the inspirational postmenopausal women for me have a deep grace, but they also have a very powerful capacity to see what is absurd and funny about like the previous ways of looking at things that they're, they're able to put their finger on the on the button and just so i'm wondering if you have anything to say about that uh, funnily, funnily enough yes <laughs> i mean in terms of being up one's own ass i think uh, this, this i had this sort of feeling going through menopause where i was going oh my God, oh, I did that, like sort of cringing slightly. It was like, it was very, I saw my arrogance in glorious technicolor. Uh, Uma, you had, there you are. Oh, you've got your dog. <laughs> oh, you have a new dog. This is, my, I, this is, this is Rosa. Oh, sweet Rosa. <laughs> She's my daughter's puppy. She oh. wanted to get in. Um, I saw my own um, arrogance. I, I, it was unbelievably humbling. This word humbling is very core for me about menopause. And, and then I said that word freedom. It was liberating. It's like, oh, fuck it, you know? We're all human. I just suddenly got how human. We're human. We're so human. I am so painfully human. You are so painfully human. But we all have a particular genius. We all have this very something that is exquisitely, exquisitely brilliant, you know, that, that we have come here to serve and be in the world. And then around that, we are gloriously messy, gloriously human. And um, humour is absolute. If, if there is no humour, the divine is not present for me. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like hear, hearing the laughter of the goddess. <laughs> That's what men are. Is. It's, she's having a laugh. <laughs> she's saying, just when you thought you got it all together, you That's menstruality it. consciousness, so cool, lady. Yes. Is everything perfect. Ah, see how you deal with this one. See how you deal with this one. And so when I see, I don't want to, well, I don't want to get into it, but it's like, all it's, there is a beautiful wave of like a rising respect for feminine consciousness. And there's any number of wonderful goddess priestess training courses, which you can do. And I'm like, yeah. And let me see you guys when you're 50 fucking six. I want to see that. You know, I feel that the, the wisdom of the humor of the, oh, that, you know, that's why. Yeah. Anyway, I love that all the real teachers I've learned for are in their, you know, they're in their sixties or seventies. God bless them because that's where, you know, you know all that stuff. I, I anyway, I don't want to get into it, but it's like it is a real power. That it's a strange and beautiful combination of humility and and kick ass confidence. Those two go together. People laugh at me when I talk about humility because they say you're so fucking arrogant, Uma. I'm like, well, actually, I, 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 I haven't got anything to lose. Like, I'm not pretending anything here. This is just for real. So why, why would I need to be anything other than like deeply humble and like kick ass confident because <laughs> I ain't got anything to hide. <laughs> so we can laugh, you know, bless it. It's, you know, whereas. I really um, like, I anyway. like what you're saying though, Uma. I, I feel <laughs> you are really encapsulating the, the real power of menopause in those words that you're using. Um, this humility and this it is this waking up to oneself and there is this almost devil may care energy that comes because we don't care what other people think other people think anymore so it's this it's an interesting combination of knowing who you are not caring what others think and at the same time discovering you are painfully human and you can cock up like the best of them. You're not excused from abusing power, but what you do bring to the power conversation or the power table is hopefully a life well lived and a real, you've been done over basically at menopause. You have been really, um, 
um, worked over, humbled, and if you've done your inner work, you will come out feeling, holding on to that humility, um, but also able to stand for yourself, to feel your own sovereignty. It's an interesting combination of feeling your own sovereignty, recognizing your utter, you know, this humility, holding on to this humility. And, um, and that menopause is very soft. It, it tenderizes you. It works you. And you come out tender. You're feeling feeling for the world. I think that's a good combination of forces for coming to the power table, because this is, this is where the work is leading for me, Uma, which is that, and perhaps we should think about um, winding up our conversation at this point, just by finishing by saying that post-menopause women, I think, are needed in the world today, ever more strongly. That, 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 that the future is calling to postmenopause women to step up and step into the arena and um, become the leaders that we need today. I think that we are the leaders that are needed in the world today. Yeah, I, 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 I totally appreciate that. And I think it's important, but... One aspect for me of the humility is, is a handing over of power, a handing over of power to young people. The future is coming and the future is not me. I'm, not the, I'm done. I'm there to support as, as a, I'm not postmenopausal, I'm still in it. But what I see is that the real wisdom of the postmenopausal women whom I truly respect and honor are women who are actually being able to, um, to hand over the power to the young I feel really, I'm doing work around menstrual policies in schools. I'm supporting my daughter and her young friends who have just entered Manaki. Beautiful. I think there's a gift in the, can you, can I just have a little minute of silence whilst I finish? Cause I'm just nearly done that in the gift that the, that we have in having been through menopause is to see that there is a wisdom that is about leadership, but that leadership is about council leadership and it's a different kind of leadership. It's a menopause you can't see any value in leading in the one man at the top structure oh, no, 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 that? No, no. It's, it's not, not that, that kind of leadership oh, no, no 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 it's not that kind of leadership at all, right? i know that's what you mean yeah. i just wanted to make it explicit so that we yeah so that we hand the the, the power that we understand in our own, that's worked through our own bodies and our lives we we honor what's needed by really um respecting of of the younger women and I mean the much younger women you know um, and um, and that's valuable so that there's a there's a place in that for everyone. And as we honor the menopausal wisdom that also helps us honor the wisdom of other life forms the wisdom of the earth herself the wisdom of young people and of the children and of the people whose voices haven't been heard because as a menopausal woman we realize one of the powers we have is that nobody friggin listens you know we're not sexy and lovely look anymore so we don't have any place in that kind of power broken femininity that's about about uh, uh, uh patriarchal construct of femininity we're existing outside of that and because of that we are one of the voices who has been marginalized and that means we can understand the importance of bringing those margins into the center so that the others whose voices are never heard the young children and the people at the edges and the indigenous folk and the people who are never get a seat in power. You know, they, I think that's, a, that's one of the wisdoms. That's part of it. And I really am um, in celebration of the fact that we had so many postmenopausal women on the frigging planet. You know, my grannies were dead at 72 or like, you know what I mean? They were like, well, actually one of them lived to be a very old age. Like, it's a demographic shift. And if we can support that as, a, as an awakening of consciousness, then menopause is so it's a powerful support for like ecological awareness and, and, and understanding of, of all these movements that are rising to, to prevent ecocide and to actually consciousness in a, in a global sense. And that menopausal women, you're right, have a leadership role, but it's not the kind of leadership we think. You know, no, it's no, 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 else. no, not at all. Because we are something else. I, I absolutely agree with you. But for me, this when I talk about leadership, 
I'm talking about, well, exactly how you've described it. It is this, the word wisdom is central to it, but the way I would describe it is, is the recognition of myself and the world as one. So what I do to myself, I do to the world. Yeah. And so it is the sense of stepping up to serve something greater than us. And those are the kind of leaders that we are needing. And menopause is a leadership training program in itself in service of that new kind of leadership. Absolutely. So we need to like stop talking and let other people get a look in. Yes. Uma, um, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I've got some juicy little comments I've written down because I'm writing a book on menopause now. So I think I might sneak some of these little comments in and I shall quote you, Uma. <laughs> um, it's been an utter pleasure to talk to you this morning, Uma. Thank you so much because I know that you are insanely busy. <laughs> yes. And you're yes. just about to go off on a US tour. Thank you teaching your wonderful work around the US. And um, so I'm going to wish you well on that and just deep gratitude for giving your time this morning to talk. Yeah, so beautiful. And um, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share that. And, um, and I invite everyone to, 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 you know, to reflect on this. I look forward to meeting my sisters in the US if I get there and balance you know anyway um and uh that will be lovely and also i just wanted to reveal a secret tool that i have which is the practice of yoga nidra that's the practice yes. that has supported me in this so all the yoga nidra that i shared the yoni nidra where you are like and the which is yoni nidra where you're expressing within yourself i found that is is basically my salvation i mean i don't want to be evangelical about it but like i feel that and the power of Nidra Shakti, which we share on the Yoga Nidra network and through my work and the work of the teachers I've trained, is, is the key to menopause. So I want to put a plug in for that so you can go listen to them for, you know, up there, the Yoga Nidra network. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Cheeky. I want to Thank you, Alexandra. I want to just second the Yoga Nidra. It's life saving. It's absolutely life saving. A core practice through menopause. Thank you, Uma. Thank you. Bye. Have a really lovely day. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a joy and delight to have you in my life, Alexandra. Thank you for your time. Thank you for, me for setting this up. Take care. Bye-bye, love, Liz. Bye-bye. Bye, Ma. <laughs> Bye-bye. Do, do you want to tell